This here's one of my boys. This is Ben. I love you, don't you, Ben? Yeah. <laughs> I can't breathe. Started off with these MX the MX sixties. Hold on just a second. <clears throat> there we go. I used these because I thought that it would confuse. Well, I had them in the first place, and I thought that would confuse the uh, electrical inspector less. So these I've been using for about the past uh, year or so. So I got these as an upgrade and uh, replaced one for one. <clears throat> so now I'm using the two um, MPPT controllers um, hooked in place of the PWMs. And they go through, this is completely uh, different systems. I've got two arrays out there, or the two main arrays I should say. Um, they use separate wires, come in on separate circuit breakers, and they go to the separate charge controllers. Okay, so now what's the problem you've been having here? This one's putting out 4.3 amps, and that one's 12.9. Yeah, when I came out this morning, one was putting out nothing, and the other one was putting out a thousand. So it was kind of odd. Um, I went out there and looked at the my main array, which is south, and the sun is right in the south right now, so that should be getting the most in. That was the one that was putting out zero. So I, I kicked off all the breakers and uh, checked each one, about 74, 75 volts off each set of uh, each pair of panels. And then um, once I powered everything back up again, that one came on just fine, and the other one dropped out. So it's kind but of, you don't have the communication cables. I don't have the comm cable yet, no. So that might be the problem. Yeah. Although it seems like it should work like just going into one battery set. Right. Man, you got some... Uh, So I can catch a lot more, um, a lot more sun, and have a much even, much more even curve. Mm -hmm. when, I'm, uh, when I've got those two arrays like that, without tracking, tracking goes into a whole different ball of wax. Yeah. So I didn't want to get around with, um, start messing with that because of all the wind around here. And right. The complexity and everything. Now you've got your panel set up as an ungrounded. It is ungrounded, yes, um, but I do have ground that comes in here that goes right. down to my uh, uh, your ground rod ground under there. Rod, right. So everything, the, the whole array is grounded. Right. Uh, so you got your equipment grounded, but the wiring itself is not grounded. Uh, now the right? wiring comes in. This ties back to the panel in there. Uh -huh. So I've got a ground here. That will tie this ground back to the panel ground in there. Right. And then I've got just the uh, the plus and minus buses mm -hmm. that go back in, inside there like that. So each uh, pair of panels is uh, looped together like that. You know, the series together. And I did find the uh, documentation. 
information on uh, uh, Snyder Electric where they say that if you use a, a breaker for the, the minus and a breaker on the positive for the same loop, then um, instead of getting, what is it, 47, 47 volts per, per breaker, it's right. good for. But if you do it this way, it's good for 125 volts. Right. So. Is um, I put I dug down I think three feet and then put in a uh, six-inch concrete. Um, of course, with a rebar and everything like that. Just just poured that on grade or um, down below grade, I guess. Once I leveled it off, and then I built it up with three courses of um, cinder block and then put in uh, OSB. It's a uh, tongue and groove OSB on top. There's also concrete pillars. They're seven inches. There's six of those all together. immersion heaters. Basically it'll be a 220 um, uh, water heater element that will stick down inside there and then I'll have them switch off um, with a relay. If you can see down inside the tank here, there's my, my pillar. Everything inside the tank is treated with thorough seal. And it's uh, two coats of thorough seal. I've got to clean the tank out before I start, before I put water in it. Okay, so now, um, what's the purpose of this? The tank is going to, uh, I'm going to heat the tank up with uh, diversion, low diversion from my solar system. And uh, I'll run it probably, just guessing, about 120 degrees or so it up to that temperature. I'm going to build a uh, Harbor Freight greenhouse 10 by 12 right over the top of this and uh, this heater or the, the heat water in the tank will radiate into the greenhouse at night and try to keep that at a more constant temperature so I can extend the growing season. Okay. Are you, are you still thinking about doing fish or anything like that? Okay. Crack key system of uh, hydroponics because there's no uh, power required. For that. You just throw the plant in the water and then uh, let the water uh, drop down a little bit, and that little section of root where the water drops down uh, will become the uh, oxygen. Uh, I guess the oxygen uh, input for the plant. Right. So, uh, that so you don't have to use bell siphons or any of that kind of thing? You don't right? have to use anything. So that's the plan right now. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. And then what's this pipe for? This pipe is for a drain, a uh, quick drain. If we get a fire up here, uh -huh. then the fire department hooks on. I'll just, uh, they've got some valve stuff that they can stick on there once I get the greenhouse built. But that will put a thousand gallons on the house if the house gets involved. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs>